This tutorial is among one of the most advanced animation tutorials. What it can do, it can help with climbing, it can help with doing flips and stuff. And the better you are animating, the better you are at understanding animations and how the body moves and how it should move. Whenever you're doing frames with keyframes, the better you are going to be at this. You don't have to do, per se, flips and stuff for it to be parkour. Um, and in first person view like Mirror's Edge, it is a lot more visually uh, easier to make than it would be a third person game. So if you're making Mirror's Edge, the obstacle course games, this is actually sort of easier, way easier to do than it would be if you were uh, to do third person like, let's say, the stuff that you may see in Uncharted. That stuff is a lot more hard to animate in Dreams PS4 because of the way it collides and you have to make sure the character is precisely in the spot where it needs to be in order for the animations to not go through the wall if that makes sense. Now there can be a little bit of clipping but you technically don't want there to be too much clipping. Um, let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So before we even get into the logic, I'm just going to show you guys what the timeline looks like. Now, whenever you're animating for parkour, you want to rewind things uh, whenever you're using the keyframe um, with certain keyframes. Like if something doesn't work, then try hitting the rewind button and then try uh, establishing your keyframe. The most important thing to remember is the final keyframe. The final keyframe should be a movement of where the puppet is going to go or where your main character is going to go without being scoped in with L1 and X. So how do you scope in in Dreams PS4? I just press circle to back out of everything. Um, I'm just going to pull out a separate puppet to show you how to scope in and out. You scope in by pressing L1 and X. When you're L1 and X and you're actually uh, animating with a keyframe, this is how you move the limbs. This is how you move the limbs. But if you were to actually move the body, um, it's actually not moving the position of where the puppet is. So the real place where the puppet is, I'm going to press L1 and square, or uh, back out real quick. Where the puppet really is, is this hitbox right here. So that only moves if you're not scoped in. That'll only move if you animate it like this, not if you animate it scoped in like this. So what this final keyframe is, is an animation of the movement after you grab the puppet. So what you can do, um, what you want to do, is effectively also make it to where the puppet looks at where it's going to need to do the obstacle course uh, jump at. This is a real easy thing to actually program. What you'll need is a tag, put it where the trigger zone or where the puppet is going to jump is going to be at. Then put the detected of the trigger zone inside of the power port of the tag. This means this tag is only on whenever the puppet is inside of this trigger zone. So it's only going to look at this dot whenever uh, the puppet is inside of this range. What you want to do next is make it to where the puppet looks at that dot. What you want to do is turn on turn towards and then type in the tag name. You can also do stage indicators like maybe an X near where the trigger zone is so the character knows where to go. And this is how I have the keyframes uh, created. So 
this keyframe is nothing at all, but it's set to linear. That's what this line is. You just press L1 and square to set. Then this is the spacing I have in between the keyframes. What I did was whenever, um, first let me show you. So what I did here was this keyframe, then I copied that keyframe after I animated the body parts, so it's like an onion skin. So then this keyframe, then I moved the body up by pressing R2, I think. So I just went up like that while grabbing the base part of the body right here, I think, while I was scoped in. Then I did this. And that's the foot movement. Then with this keyframe, I dragged it diagonally from the base part of the body right here, I think. I think that's why you see that line there, representation. The reason why we see these lines and how smooth, look how smooth I have it uh, animating, that's because uh, it's showing uh, pretty much how smooth the strokes are when you animate, when you grab it. So that's actually really good to actually use, but you only see those lines if it's, uh, if the keyframe is set to linear and if you're animating after you've um, animated something previous to that object. And with this final keyframe, I either animated it outside of the timeline or I uh, animated it inside of the timeline. But typically what I did was I just uh, pressed L1 and X on the keyframe, had it recording, then I just moved it just a little bit, just slightly. Whenever you're in this keyframe right here, what you want to do is, um, you might want to make sure your uh, puppet is not collidable with the walls. So don't animate that with key that this keyframe. Do that with like maybe a separate keyframe like this one. You can change, um, you can turn the stuff off with the keyframe. So by pressing L1 and X and then recording the stuff being off. What you also want to do with a separate keyframe that's throughout this whole animation is turn off this jump animation. You want to turn off this microchip. You might want to turn that off with that keyframe. Make sure it's not on keep changes. You might want to turn this off. You might want to turn off auto look. You can mess around with all of that as you please. Again, this is the hitbox. You can actually use a keyframe to change around the scope of this hitbox while it's animating. And you can turn off the collidable option if you want to. So again, this final keyframe, I either animated it outside of the timeline then put it inside the timeline, or I animated it above one of these keyframes so that way I could see where the position the puppet was going to be at, and then maybe I uh, just did it like this. But then I set it to keep changes. So the final keyframe is the only one that's on keep changes. And then what I did was probably this, I think, maybe. So let me rewind everything. Just play, press circle to get everything back to normal. Yep, that's what I did. That's what I did, but you'll notice <clears throat> for um for mine, for whatever reason, my puppets just uh, got some weird collisions. This shouldn't happen for you. I have no idea why it's doing that right now. You can change the speed as you please right here. If you have it really high and if the puppet's collidable stuff, it'll make it jump really high at the end of the animation, just so you guys know. But this is a typically how you can do climbing with ladders, how you can do uh, parkour stuff like flips and stuff. You just have to be, the better you are with animating, the better you will be with this. And here's the logic for it. It's just the detection of the puppet 
So here's my settings. I have it set to this. Hook this into the puppet. Detection set to inside of a AND gate, a AND gate. And then the button that you press from a control sensor set to one of these ports. And then the result turns this on. One of these keyframes deactivates. The control sensor either by this, make sure it's not on key changes, or a on switch inside of disable controls. If you're going to do possession, make sure it's on force possession. And if you're going to do remote, make sure it's on remote, but make sure the keyframe changes it from remote to none or disables controls while the animation of parkour or climbing is going into an event. So this is going to look kind of funny because, uh, oh wait, let me delete that. Because I have it on remote. But notice how he's not looking at the wall, right? But then when we get closer to the part that he needs to be at, he is staring. Uh, so you can, you should be able to increase the speed of it. Let me press the proper button. And there we go. We have parkoured our way on top of something. And then what you want to do is make it to where after um, after the animation is done, you want to make it to where the controls are no longer disabled. So I think the controls may still be disabled. It's still set. No, it's just set to none. So. What you can do is, if there's a keyframe that has this set to none, you can kind of just like either make it to where it's not there at the end, or you can uh, connect a keyframe on in trigger. It sets it back to remote, but have that keyframe that uh, this is connected to the power port of that keyframe. Make sure that keyframe's on keep changes, or you can just use the disable method. Whatever you're gonna do whatever you're going to do and you can increase the turn speed by pressing on one square on your puppet then just uh increasing this right here so effectively what this should do yep And you might want to mess with the hitbox of that trigger zone, so you have to be like precisely at the right spot for it to work. And you can animate it better if you want to. So another thing that you can do is mess with the collisions inside of the puppet itself. If you actually turn on collide on these individual limbs, just press L1 and X on the base part of the puppet, then press L1 and square. If you turn this collision thing on, it actually increases the graphics by two. The more you know. And then you can mess around with the friction and stuff like that. This means that it would technically collide, the puppet will collide with the, um, with all of this stuff, like the object inside and not just the hitbox, if that makes sense. So you'll have to be more precise with your animations, but it should make it to where it won't clip, your puppet won't clip at all, um, if you're afraid of that. But you'll have to be really good at animating to do it this way. So here's an example of that. So you'll notice that a lot of the body parts were like skidding across of the wall. That's pretty much what that is. So that way your puppet won't go, you know, through anything if that makes sense while it's uh, parkouring. And this is why first person view parkour would technically be a lot easier than um, third person because you have to get really precise with how things look. You can look up my quick time event tutorial, that'll probably help you out. 
a bunch in combination with this. You can look on my main menu tutorial, my 2D game tutorial, my fighting game and combos tutorial if you guys um, enjoyed this one. And let me know if uh, your control sensor is still disabling your puppet afterwards and I'll help you with that. But there, that, that should be a real easy fix to fix. Um, I'll go into more detail for that for you. But that's pretty much parkour um, in Dreams PS4 or a way to do it. Remember, you might have to rewind a few times while you're animating or press circle while you're animating to adjust it back to the original um, an uh, animation position. So remember that also. Or just press circle and then rewind while you're animating to, you know, just mess around with them. Um, get the keyframes right. So it's actually really simple. It's just really just animation and Here's the setting for the control sensor that controls the puppet. Pause the video if you want to. And the trigger zone. Trigger zone and gate timeline. And then button plugged into the and gate and then animations. And here's the way the animations look, the size of my animations if you like the way that I animated it the size of my keyframes, copy and uh, paste the onion skin from the last uh, position that you did if you need to. Have keyframes remember the last frame, just copy the keyframe after you're done animating with that previous keyframe. First keyframe should not have an animation at all but it should set be set to linear so that way there's a transition effect from where the puppet position first was. All right, guys. Uh, I didn't say that. Follow me on Dreams. I'm Young Text YouTube on Dreams. Subscribe to me on YouTube. I'm Young Text on YouTube. Follow me on Twitch. I'm Young Text on Twitch. I stream on YouTube. Also, if it's out of stream at the top, feel free to pop into the stream. Uh, click on my channel name, then go to playlist, then go to playlist uh, for more tutorials. So my channel name, then all my channels should be playlists for more tutorials for Dreams PS4. Um, and follow me in Dreams. I'm Young Text in Dreams, and I have games and free props, sculptures for you guys to use for your creations. Here's a fighting game that I'm working on. I've been showing off Pip. He's going to be a character inside of it. I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned what you needed to learn with Dreams PS4 animations, hitboxes, and parkour, climbing with ladders, and more. I have a character customization tutorial if you want to learn how to make customizable characters also. I still haven't animated the arm. On the right or on the left side, but this is technically an animation tutorial, also. So, all that great stuff. If you like Fortnite skins, peace out.